Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 3 of the best of 5 between Nilla and Under the Sea in the grand final of the Season 6 playoffs of the Steel Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Slutsk East and on our left in the red team playing on the allied side we have Nilla using the 2nd Infantry Indian Head and the Maverick Deployment Type. And on our right in the blue team playing also on the allied side we have Under the Sea using the 97th Guards Rifles and the Maverick Deployment Type. So currently in the series, Nilla is 2-0 up, which means if he takes this game from under the sea and makes it 3-0, he will of course become the champion of Season 6 of the Steel Division 2 League, which is quite the achievement. I'm not sure I remember a time when there was a 3-0 sweep in a grand final of the Steel Division 2 League. But maybe Nilla can make it happen. Under the sea is of course going to want to stop Nella in his tracks and with the 97th on Slutsk I would say his chances are relatively high uh, he will be able to control the open ground so we'll have to see how he can deal with that but both players are going to be opting for the Maverick deployment type again uh, Under the Sea seems to have been struggling in phase B with getting his uh, foot on the gas pedal and really trying to like curb the aggression that Nilla is throwing into him. I mean, ultimately, you want to be in a position where you're the aggressor and you're the one putting the pressure on your opponent. But Nilla's always been in the driving seat so far. Um, Nilla has actually kind of reminded me very much of sort of Gonzo's old play style where he was very, very aggressive on the ground. But Nilla sprinkles in quite a bit of airplay especially with the strafing runs that we've seen in both the first and second game so far. So second US, quite an interesting one for Nilla here. Uh, doesn't really have the as much air to really help him out as he'd probably like. You can, of course, get the Thunderbolts with the different payloads and just like the fighter ones that can probably strafe relatively well for suppression but don't necessarily do like a ton of damage. Um, then you've got... Of course, the 60mm mortars again, if he wants them. He did use quite a lot of 60mm mortars in the second game with the first Blindata. Um, they were helpful for him in the town engagements. And on Slutsk East on the top side here, you do certainly get uh, a town engagement that, that would find those useful. Uh, so we'll have to see if those come in. Um, second US, of course, does have like all of the different ranger units. Um, quite decent early infantry. Um, so Nilla's maybe going to try and capitalize on those to make some ground. On the side of the 97th, uh, you do have like heavy arm and there's also some really good artillery options, especially off map. Uh, they do get the uh, big riverboat off map, so that might be able to make a big difference for under the sea. But let's have a quick look at what's going down at the start of this match. So there's an M1 gun on the top side here with three Ranger LMGs and an Engineer Leader. Uh, there's going to be three 50 cal Jeeps, two Ranger Marauders, uh, two standard Rangers, two more Rangers LMG. And looks like two tanks there as well, M4A1 and M4A1 Command. Ranger Marauder is actually moving up onto the hill here to provide some recon capability. P47 also out at the start for strafing capabilities. There's going to be two flamethrowers and a Ranger there. I guess the P47 is also here to kind of cover off against enemy air aggression at the start. Um, but yeah, the M10 is moving up onto the hill and then we see a flamethrower on the bottom side just to cover that off. Uh, provide presence down here to uh, kind of curb any aggression on that bottom side. For Under the Sea, he's decided to go for two Gavardia DP and an Avto with the leader into the town. There's going to be a 50mm mortar at the start uh, with a leader there and some Strafniki Gavardia DP and Gavardia. T34 76 Red Vedka also following that up. Sniper kind of sitting back to provide recon. Uh, two Avtos kind of heading towards this top flag on the bottom side uh, with the Maxim kind of covering that. And then Sniper Maxim there, 45 mils here. Bardia IS-1 actually coming in as well down here uh, towards the beginning of the game. And this IS-1 is actually quite vulnerable to the M10s of the second US. The second US do you get the APCR on their M10s and on the Hellcats later on and those can be very very effective against heavier armoured targets but a lovely snipe there from the Avtos is going to take out one of those half tracks not going to quite manage to get the second I expect 
jeeps were moved up here. Two of them have gone down already as the Cavalier opened up onto those. Looks like the M2A1 did get some damage onto the Rangers there. E47 actually looking for the strafing run now. Onto those units. Oh, Rangers here. They're currently being shot up by these two Gavardia DP. So Stravniki now running away. Gavardia DP with a two-star veterancy. Getting some good damage in there, and the Rangers go down very quickly indeed. They're, these Rangers can be very scary, especially these uh, Ranger LMGs when they get the three-star veterancy. Can be at, come absolutely awesome mid-range monsters. This engagement, though, between uh, Nilla and Under the Sea over this flag is actually pretty crucial early on. Also, the Sniper and Maxim going for these flamethrowers could be nice as well. Because if all three of these units go down on the side of Nilla, Under the Sea is going to get a great advantage at the start of this game. He's already decided to opt for a 37 mil to cover this bottom side. Knows that he has a strong open map advantage with the 97th here. So might just look to continue to exploit that. But off map has been brought in. 203 mil off map from Nilla. That's going to be landing on the edge of the hill here. Looking to push under the sea off and take that flag. B-47 still going for the strafing run regardless of the AA. Does have to be very careful. The 37 might actually end up shooting that down if it can continue to get shots on target with the two-star veterancy thanks to the IS-1. Can it do it? Will it take it down? That was very, very damaged, but not quite. So Flamethrower is now just launching their smokes to keep themselves alive long enough. But eventually that smoke's going to go down. Eventually the sniper's going to fire again. And those will be taken out. The M4A3105 looks to be Nilla's answer to this. Whereby he can potentially fire position units out of these buildings. Uh, to gain the open ground advantage himself. And the off map here has seemed to have pushed the Gavardia back off the hill. And the leader as well there. The M4A1 and the M4 command. Also putting some pressure onto the Gavardi DP. The sniper's taken out one of the flamethrowers. If the second flamethrower goes down before the M4A3 gets here, that could be really bad because he'd lose pressure on this flag and he can't really move the M4A3 up too much because of the IS-1. So, yeah, got to be keeping an eye on that. But nice snipes here from the IS-1 does take out the engineers there. Avtos are going to get an engagement with the rangers. Dodge the flames as well. Nice mocro from under the sea. Big, big off map on this top side. Looks like it's hitting hard, but the M4A1 is going to go down to the T34 and. Well, the T34 76 and the T34 85. So he's taken down one of the tanks there. The Gavardi TP now moving back up to deal with the Rangers. The M3 OP is moving through here to look for the surrenders onto uh, these units, but not able to find them. So just going to try and secure a little bit of ground there and take that flag on the top side. But with the aggression coming through on the bottom side, well, things are actually relatively equal at the moment. M10 does manage to find a transmission damage with its last APCR shot. Oh, side shot coming in from the M4A3. That's dangerous. Another scene needs to be careful with that IS-1. Ranger Marauders finding a Willy Pete onto the Avtos and those... Avto's pushed out of position there into the Rangers. It's going to make them take a lot of damage. These Ranger Marauders also going to be pushing back the Gavardia here. The Thompson submachine gun is very, very strong. And at this close range, like the Gavardia can't use this DP. So the DPS difference here isn't that different between Ranger Marauders and Gavardia. Which is kind of crazy for a three-man squad versus a ten-man squad. But it's just how it is. Um, the Gavardia are going to get taken out. Most of this stuff has been pushed off the hill. Nilla has managed to find some decent ground in this town, but these Gavardia didn't get taken out or surrendered, which is pretty big. Um, the off-map vehicle wasn't able to surrender those. Uh, sometimes the off-map vehicles, I think if they don't have a weapon, um, they can't surrender or something like that. There's like a weird rule to it, um, whereby like certain off-map vehicles can surrender and others can't. Uh, but in that case, he couldn't surrender them. Uh, it might have also been due to uh, like a leader nearby, but I wasn't entirely sure. Either way, uh, Ranger Marauders might get overwhelmed there by the Avtos at close range once they join the Gavardi DP in that engagement. 60 more mortars have been brought in, uh, brought in from Nilla there. 
Though he does look like he's going to opt for those 60mm mortars to help him in the town. Uh, it looks like the M10 managed to get a clean kill onto the transport there. So that's an, another nice transport snipe. And every transport snipe like that is, is always very good. Uh, Ranger Marauders, having killed the Gavardi, did manage to take ground for another unit briefly. But uh, now with the other unit dying up here that was pushing the front line, uh, these are actually going to end up behind enemy lines because they are recon units. So uh, currently just waiting there in ambush. If you get that next to the road, that could be actually really brutal. E34. Currently looking for shots into the town. It looks like maybe the Zis 2 here or the uh, the T34 got shots onto the M10. Either way, it is crew panicked and falling back. If the Zis 2 can maybe finish it off, it can. So good kill there. This IS-1 <laughs> currently still bouncing shots from the M4A1 over here. The HE fire coming in. And the HE, I guess, could eventually kill the IS-1. Oh, good kill from the Marauders, though. Oh, there we go. Lovely stuff. One Gavardi went down. Two Gavardi go down, so they're not even going to be able to contest that. P-47 coming in for the strafing run. Oh, actually got a lot of damage onto that Zis-2. I think it's because the Zis-2 moved, so it lost its entrenchment bonus and, and took, a, took a lot of damage there. The uh, T-34 did take a hit from something. Probably the M4A1 up here, potentially. The T-34 is going to take out the M4A1 command. The M1 is probably going to take out the T-34 if he can get a shot on target. The SU-85 is also engaging there. On the bottom side, M4A1 does go down. Now the IS-1 looking for the kill onto the M10. One big trouble you have with these sorts of engagements is like, yes, the M10 you know, has a decent amount of penetration on the APCR, but it only has three shots. So you get in this weird scenario where like, you're quite happily engaging the IS-1, then all of a sudden you run out of ammo and you don't want to anymore. But was that a shot from the... That must have been an M10 shot went in there and actually managed to find a penetrating shot onto the IS-1 there in the end. So, well, cleans it up. M1 gun. Gonna get pinned. T34 Rosvetka did go down in the open. We are gonna see the P47 come in with the bombing strike onto the strafs, but only does four damage. Now the 45 and this 37 are definitely under threat. This M4 A3105 is gonna be able to clean up both of them quite easily. The 45 really struggling to penetrate the M4 at that range. Under the sea. Definitely going to be trying to move that back as quickly as possible. P-47 even coming in for the strafing run, though. Oh, just adding insult to injury. And one more shot there from the M10 is going to take out the 37. So removes the AA that could have built up over time. And it's really, really rough when that happens. When you bring in individual AA units and they get picked off like that, it's always a bad time because you really want to just be able to hit that sort of massive AA that allows you to force back fighter bombers like this whereas like one yeah it's good enough to stop units hovering around and strafing but it's never going to actually you know shoot down an aircraft on its own once but once you get like an extra two or three uh, then things start to get a bit more realistic in that regard like yeah, they'll actually start taking out units uh, looks like this M1 gun did manage to clean up the T-34-76 here brief line of sight. And it seems like Nilla's infantry early on has managed to slowly but surely clean out under the seas infantry with the help of the mortars, the bombing strikes and the off map of course. This too does get finished off by the P-47. So currently Nilla in the lead with the 14-10 uh, but an IS-2 1944 coming onto the field is a big play here from under the sea. He needs to make this work. He's got to get good value under this IS-2. It's super important right now, but there is no AA and a P-47 rocket plane is already on its way. These things aren't cheap either. That's 170 points. I mean, in Maverick deployment type in Phase B, you've got the perfect amount to buy one with one tick of income. Doesn't really get that many rockets on target, so this IS-2 didn't really take that much damage. Um, the 180 mils of front armor there, dealing with that quite nicely. 
as uh, Under the Sea reverses it away, is going to definitely want to invest in AA, and that's exactly what he is doing. Getting a decent AA up net, AA net up there to defend the IS-2 is super important. But imagine if he had the other one that didn't die earlier as well. He would have been able to have that one like slightly behind in cover, and then this one maybe a bit further forwards, and then you can kind of stop those Thunderbolts from being so effective uh, because by the time that they actually release the rockets or the bombs, they're going to be very inaccurate. On this top side, uh, looks like two Strafs and an Avtos trying to go up against the uh, rifles here, rifles early and the basics. Basics, uh, decent value for money. Disheartened squad with the 10 M1 Garands. Do actually do pretty well at mid range. P47 coming in with the strafing run again. It's IS2. Looks like it's cleaned up all the armor down here. The uh, M10 get, did go down. I believe the M4 is also gone. So, yeah, now the IS2 is just going to be unleashing HE shells into uh, these units further up. And it will be covered by that 3070. Definitely want to get a second one in there. I believe it was the series between Nilla and Vesley where both players were always bringing in their 37mm AA in pairs and there is a very good reason why you do that because if we watch this P47 go in for another rocket strike you'll notice that the 37 is barely going to do anything oh I say that <laughs> it managed to get a pretty good hit in there actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it managed to do a pretty, get a pretty good hit. I think because the 37 was right next to the IS-2 in this case, the P-47 like put its nose straight towards the 37, and aircraft do take more damage if they get hit right in the front. So in that case, it worked out. But yeah, for the most part, the rockets would still get fired, whereas if you had two, they wouldn't. And um, that's kind of the difference in those cases most of the time. So the rifles early managing to clean this out 60 more mortars doing a nice job to just uh, continuously arty areas of interest for Nilla in this case he is blind firing again he did this in the last game I, d I think again 60 more mortars are really nice when you know that there's a unit there if you're guessing then they're not going to be very effective but when you know there's a unit there they're really good for just cleaning out um, units that you just don't want to fight head on because you're going to pin them down and then be able to just surrender them or force them to run away a 37 on the top side here <laughs> hit pretty hard there by the M4A1 105 that's actually fast moving forwards though at the moment uh, I wonder if he's trying to get a shot onto the SU85 here with the the heat round but 132mm off map coming in is this the riverboat? Looks like it might be. He's going to be trying to riverboat this town to take it back. 37 does go down. After he's currently just chilling on the side of this building. Unfortunately, they're not going to last too long as the basics are shooting them to pieces. But yeah, under the sea, continuing to at least control the open ground, which is making it difficult for Nilla to maintain a double tick. M4A3, looking for the shot onto the SU-85, is going to find it. The heat rounds are very, very damaging uh, in those engagements. The T-34 managed to take that out, but here comes the riverboat off map. It's going to probably delete every single infantry unit in this area, plus these AT guns. And then he's going to be able to push back in, but Nilla does have these two rifles late further back that he's going to be starting to move forwards to get back into position and these Hellcats are also now repositioning onto the main road to take care of under the seas units as they try and push in so that's you know a very smart play here from from Nilla he's basically just trying to get these into line of sight so he can transport snipe and prevent the aggression can any of them get on target in time no they cannot under the sea is going to get one of those back one of those flags back on the top side town P-47, nice rocket strike there onto the T-34 things are currently 12 to 12 that off map getting a decent chunk of kills definitely helping out quite a bit 
Gonna sort of level things out there on the top side at least. Hellcat does get popped on this bottom side. That's a clean shot there from the IS-2. IS-2 is uh, not, you know, the most accurate range. You can see the AP shell there is only 35% accurate. Does have the one-star veterancy from the Comrotti, so a little bit more from that. But even so, you can see it's just missing those basics for days. P-47 came in with the bombing strike on the ZIS-2. Unfortunately, didn't get the kill there. Um, it looks like the bomb was just a little bit off. Tankos unloading into the face of the rifles there. Now we've got two Gavadi DP unloading into these rifles, pushing them off the flag. That's what Under the Sea is trying to do here. The thing's not as fast and furious in Phase B as we've seen in previous games. I feel like in the close range engagements, uh, Nil has done very, very well in the previous games. But since there's this open range engagement that he's now got to worry about, Seems like he is kind of like struggling to uh, really find a way to deal with Under the Sea in this area. And of course, an IS-2 is all 1944 especially is going to be very, very hard to deal with. So Under the Sea is making good use of that to kind of slow down the game. And he's actually managed to find an advantage for the first time in this best of three series. He is currently sitting at a 13 to 11, um, which, I mean... <laughs> That being the first time in this series just shows you how aggressive and far ahead Nella has been in most of these games so far. So it's good to see um, Under the Sea kind of managing to quell some of the initial aggression from um, Nilla. That off map really stinging Nilla on the top side. And uh, now it's just time for the game to move into Phase C. And then we're going to be playing Availability Wars where... Either player is going to have to be really careful about what they commit uh, because they're going to end up with a very limited amount of resources left. However, I'd imagine that the 97th deck is probably deeper just to, due to the addition of the uh, IS-2. is probably going to have a bit more to spend its points on. Bombing Strike actually completely whiffs on that flag. The two Gavadi DP here slowly pushing in. Flame Thrower creating a bit of a smoke wall there so the Gavadi can't kill them though. Oh, we're going to be seeing a bombing strikes coming in here. Oh, is this going to be enough? This is why two would be better than one. P-38 going in for the bombing strike with the P-47 to follow it up, plus the P-47 at the back rocket plane. Is it going to be enough? It is. He takes it out. And the Cobra goes down as well. That's unfortunate, and because there's only one, and it's not being targeted at any unit in particular, or any aircraft in particular, nothing's going to get shot down. All the P-47s get out alive, and the P-38 Lightning. That is very, very bad for Under the Sea in the open here. The massive aircraft has built up. Seems like that's really become a problem now. Under the Sea, as even the AA is being strafed by the fighter. This Thunderbolt's still going to want to be careful. Like it can't just hover around like this. It will eventually get shot down as the 37 gets more and more accurate with every shot. Weapon jam there. Will it get killed off though? They are very resilient. Strafing run going to stop that. And the P-47 bombing strike to follow up as well. Oh, this is brutal. This is brutal. Another IS-2 1944 being purchased by Under the Sea. Moving into Phase C, that is a lot of unit, or a lot of points to invest in a unit. He now has 80 points per minute, and he just purchased a 220-point tank. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope he can make the most of it, because it's certainly going to be important that he does so. P-47 bombing, or bomber actually comes in to finish off that A8 with a strafing run. Now another 37 on the way. I'm really hoping that a second 37 gets purchased here because it's so important to keep this IS-2 alive. Otherwise the, things, the same thing is just going to happen again uh, to this IS-2 on the bottom side. But things currently at 13 to 11. Rhino in the town. Pushing up here. With the 120 mils of frontal armor, rhinos can be real difficult to deal with. Uh, your standard sort of mid-range AT at close range isn't going to do anything. Uh, so you really have to rely on, say, like the APCR of this SIS-2, for example, 
And so that being in the correct position to take out the Rhino is going to be super important because the infantry is not going to be able to do the job, that's for sure. One of the snipers in the open does get strafed to death as it opens up onto these engineers in the open. Maxim's also going to go down as the Hellcat supports this infantry push towards uh, this little town village thing here. M18. Looking for the shot onto the Stuttberger. I believe this was brought in to fix the... Maybe fix the transmission damage, but I'm not entirely sure. P47 again! Oh, the smoke grenade clutch from the... Oh, that was so good! So, uh, under the sea managed to smoke grenade in front of the IS-2, which meant the P-47 could not get direct line of sight on the, uh, on the tank to actually unload its payload. That is amazing. Really well done there. Oh, bomb does go off here, but he might get that shot down. If the 37 doesn't fall back and it manages to get more shots on target, he might be able to kill the P-47, punish him for diving straight towards but here comes the 30 the second 37 there we go okay it does manage to shoot that down at least but there's finally a second one and the oh the hellcat snipe beautiful stuff this is2 sniped not only one but two hellcats at max range shot to shot that is like back to back that is very very nice indeed the double 37 now definitely gonna stop that p47 and see how much more effective two is compared to one it's amazing so there we go, P-47 goes down, last Hellcat goes down here, I think that was to the T-34. This is now looking a lot better for Under the Sea. And like as soon as he gets the second 37 in here, it's so much easier to control this open ground because he doesn't have to worry about all of these planes, which are the only thing that's really been keeping Nilla in this spot side engagement. Because all of the armor that Nilla's tried to throw down here so far has been picked off, the M10s, uh, the M4A3 that he brought in, uh, the two Hellcats there, or three Hellcats that he brought in. Um, now T-34 is just rushing forwards, going to run down those rifles. This P-47 probably will be able to pick off the D-34 here before it surrenders a second unit. Maybe. Oh, it didn't even get the kill. That's unfortunate. Usually these P-47s are pretty reliable for taking out medium armor. In this case... T-34 is going to survive to fight another day. But I think we're getting to the situation where obviously both players are sitting on low income. Uh, they are just bringing in infantry as and when they need it in different areas of the map. Currently Nilla in a very strong position on this top side. He's even got a bunch of units here just kind of waiting. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. Obviously at the moment he can't really move forwards. Maybe he's ex expecting another off map onto the town and then he can like move that in after an off map comes down or maybe after some uh, like push comes in here he can then like replace all of his units at the front very quickly that would be one way to do it yeah there we go <laughs> off map coming in see Nilla <laughs> the foresight on this is just incredible he knows that there's no point in in investing too many infantry into a location where there's already a lot of infantry right he's already got what four squads here five squads here very sort of concentrated that off map's just going to hit them all so he doesn't want to add more flames to the fire or more fuel to the fire by putting his engineers in the same locations so he's just going to wait and if off map does come in he can just replace it as and when he needs to uh, so currently sitting on a 15 to 9 this flamethrower still controlling this area the micro from the smoke uh, from nilla here has been absolutely beautiful just to hold on to these flags for a little while longer and once again we see Nelly in the lead with a two tick victory or two tick um, lead double tick coming in with the 15 to 9 flags there here comes the off map gonna be up on the hill he's gonna try and take back this flag with this off map try and secure back this position and then what he can do is continue to play potentially around the bottom side to uh, make some ground down here but at the moment, 50 cal. I'm doing a number on the Gavardi DP. 45 mil also pinned currently. IL-2M3 being used to uh, actually bomb that. The IL-2 looks like it's going to get hit pretty hard by the 50 cals of these jeeps. So it's not going to be able to hang around for the P-47, but will get over his own AA. So I expect that will be 
okay but here come the 50 cows pushing in on this bottom side the 45 mil has recovered so unless the 50 cows manage to get on target here i think the 45 mil should be able to kill them all off if that's two he's gonna be looking for the third one there so the p47 coming in for the bombing strike i'll oh, actually go for the gavania in the open probably a smart choice just to push him off this flag my off map did hit hard uh, looks like a couple surrenders coming in there or at least the surrender onto the rifles late in the building uh, leader also went down the leader dying here is actually pretty nice for uh, under the sea in this situation because he doesn't have to deal with two star rifles late and the rifles late they do have two of these BARs with the M1 Garands and at range they do actually do a decent amount of damage against the Gavardia. So Gavardia have 1.8 damage at range whilst Rifles late have like 2.35 right so they are slightly better plus the extra veterancy would have made that engagement really really hard especially against these Gavardia that don't have any veterancy at all. Now this is a really interesting off map placement. Uh, Under the Sea has committed uh, two units of Gavardia are on the top side here against these engineers. He is going to start to move away from that engagement as the uh, TNT satchels come down. But he's going to want to move out of that ASAP. Otherwise, he'd just be sacrificing his own Gavardia for no reason. Uh, good kill there, actually, on the basics with the IS-2. But this flamethrower is still holding this flag. It must be so frustrating for Under the Sea to deal with. Just get that Gavardia to go up there and, and deal with it. That's what he needs to do. Just, just commit to kicking Nilla out of this flag because he has no right to be holding it right now. Right, off map might catch Nilla off guard here because Under the Sea has his own unit in position. So we're going to see the off map coming down. It is going to kill off the Gavardia with the help of the M1A1 Rhino. The engineers not really taking as much damage as Under the Sea would probably would like but he's not going to know that at the moment. We're going to see, obviously, the Gavardia move back and try and take ground again. E47 coming in with the bombing or with the strafing run. Onto the Gavardia. Really wants to get rid of those. Leader moving up. Needs to make sure that he maintains the two star veterancy on these, otherwise, they're going to suffer. Well, that would have been the other reason that there was the supply vehicle here early, actually, because obviously the IS 2 uses up a lot of HE shells over time. So keeping those HE shells online really allows him to uh, kill infantry at range because the IS-2 does have quite a lot of HE damage on its HE shots. Well, this IL-2 is actually looking for the uh, 60 mil mortars here. I just to suppress them slightly, but all of the 50 cows from all these vehicles, looks like that's going to be a bit of a pain for that IL-2. 60 mil mortars are trying to pin down these guys. Anywhere where Nilla can find a little bit of ground he is right now. He's just constantly pushing forward just a little bit enough. Like in this situation, he's just moving across to secure this flag. Oh, here comes the air. He's managed to stop two, but the rockets of the P-47 still managed to come through. But yeah, this time around the, the IST survived, right? Because... The P-38 and the P-47 didn't manage to drop there for bombs first, which basically stopped the IS-2 from taking too much damage. Is this actually going to get shot down? Oh, almost. That would have been a really nice kill, actually. Uh, would have made it a lot easier for him to be more aggressive with the IS-2. But yeah, if he can target those and just like shoot down one of those planes at a time, um, that might actually really build up over time to give him a pretty big lead in the game because Nilla has quite a lot of points invested into those aircraft and if he can remove them from the play um, then you know the IS-2 becomes infinitely more powerful uh, the IS-2 is actually falling back for the time being it looks like he's going to try and get that reloaded with a supply vehicle where M10 actually gets popped on the hill by the ZIS-2 there off map now coming in onto the town like under the seas here ready with a bunch of transports it is a little bit telling um, when you leave a transport out in the open like this uh, before you rush forwards because yeah you know that basically it's coming like if there's something that's going to be there like why would your opponent be waiting to unload their transports you know, that's what he was waiting for the off map to come down and now they're just going to push in as under the sea pushes in and they're going to have a little fight there it's going to be What's that? Three Tankos or two Tankos, two Gavardia. I think the Rifles late should be able to 
beat them, especially <laughs> if one of them goes down their transport. You can't really allow that to happen at this point in the game. Um, losing any infantry at this point is uh, really, really tough because the availability is so low um, in a Maverick decks. The longevity of these decks is nowhere near anything like a balanced. Although I say that, like the balanced decks can sometimes be pretty shallow as well uh, in a 1v1. Uh, they just use the balanced deployment type to make sure they have a significant advantage in the late game and can continue momentum into phase C when like a Maverick deployment type would definitely fall off. Uh, but here, yeah, it hasn't gone too well for the Tankos. They've got hit by 60 more mortars. The M4A1 also opening up there is definitely helping out a lot. And the rifle's late able to deal with the Cavalier at close range. So that push completely failed for Under the Sea, which is unfortunate. His uh, infantry just not paying off at all there at all. Um, P47 being brought in to chase the IL-2. That was the, the rocket version. I'm surprised to see him committing the rocket plane as a as air to air, uh, mainly because it's probably so important to kill off the IS-2s or other other um, medium armor that uh, Under the Sea might be bringing in, uh, because the armor that Under the Sea has uh, can potentially be very strong in the 97th. Of course, like this is the second IS-2 we've seen. I, I'm not sure if we'll see. Maybe I don't know. If he brought one in Phase B, maybe he only has like one or two cards of them and he's only gonna have like two or three but the uh this two there surviving a bomb from that p47 it's nice 50 mils pushing the rifles late off the flag here this two now able to engage the m4a1 without being shot at that's a clean kill e38 that should definitely do the job those bombs are much bigger <laughs> there you go this three goes down T-34 also going down. Yeah, these aircraft really, really getting the better of Under the Sea at the moment. And not committing to the double 37 on the bottom, I feel like left him short on the top side here. To the point where now he's like not really got enough AA to uh, prevent constant airstrikes on this top side. So I guess he could potentially commit more on the bottom side. Uh, but it looks like, you know, Nilla's kind of set up here. If this... IS-2 moves too, too far forwards, then I guess there's always a potential Nilla might try and go for like side shots onto the IS-2 as it moves up, like shoot it from the ridge as it gets in range, and then bring this M10 up to match as it gets into range of the top one. That would be a good way to get the side shot in. So two Gavardia DP coming in, two more Tankos. Under the Sea really needs to get a handle on some of these flags. Stop the double ticks at least. Give him enough time to trade to victory, which is basically what he's going to have to do. That's the name of the game in Maverick Phase C. It's just trade and <laughs> trade your way to victory. <laughs> IL-2 M3 coming in with the bombing strikes as well. P2. There are these bofers coming in. And this is something that Nilla's going to be able to just continuously invest in because we haven't seen any AA all game. So um, bringing in the Bofors now is something that he can probably afford to do because he doesn't really have uh, the... Well, he doesn't have anything else really to invest into. Uh, he's probably just going to be using his spare points on those AA. Is this too? Can I get another clean kill here? That would be really nice. Or under the seat? Yes, it can. E47. Looks like it was going to go for straight and run, but didn't quite commit. 50 more mortars actually taking out the infantry there. And yeah, both players just playing very carefully. Although under the sea, it's pretty low on numbers, like in terms of infantry at least. And that leader actually accidentally jumped into the Stuttberger. P47 pulled off in time. A uh, cheeky run actually by the P47 here. It came like across the map on the top side and then came in for the side rocket hits onto the IS-2. Well, oh, 81 mil mortar now being used. Oh, this isn't good for under the sea. He's going to have to spread those out. Is exactly what he's going to do. But that could also be deadly for the IS-2 as well because the IS-2 took quite a lot of damage there. If we zoom in, you can see the, the like rusted look of it shows it's a little bit damaged 
one more rocket strike would probably do the trick to take that out or you know quite a few mortar rounds on top of its face I wonder how uh, Nil is doing for infantry availability as well because we can see like there is some Gavardia left here for under the sea IL-2 coming in for bombing strike onto those rifles. It seems like oh, it's, uh, the IL-2s are under the sea, just trying to pick off like remaining units because the 450 kilogram bomb payload is not ideal. Like, it doesn't do a lot of damage. It's enough to kill like yeah, like four or five men. So there you go. Take them down to one. Didn't kill them off, unfortunately. P-47, is that going to get the kill? It might actually because the IL-2 is going to have to turn allows the P-47 to catch up and the IL-2 is going to go down maybe yep <laughs> just about engine overheat from the 37 engaging that every kill matters at this point that's why I'm paying attention to it so much IS-2 engaging the M10 there the M10 actually took out the Maxim this M10 used up all of its HE uh, the P-47 did get out Gavardia now moving up to commit onto this flag. Uh, the 37's just constantly moving around. Or oh, M10's actually been cheeky enough to move up as well. Just holding these flags as long as he needs to. Just any time he loses the flag, just sends like one unit in to to hold it. That little bit longer. And now with the one being held on the bottom side by the M10 and this flag being captured, we're back to a 15 to 9 in favour of Nilla. It just feels like he's always one step ahead. And whilst this game has certainly lasted quite a bit longer, I feel like if the bottom side was close range engagement as well, like if this was on a different map, like Nilla's play up here would have also probably happened the same on the bottom side and under the sea would have been in the same predicament that he was before. I feel like the like having the IS-2 here, um, like the set, this obviously being the second one, has allowed him to you know, really slow down the game and control the open range flags uh, where Nilla doesn't really have a good response to it. Especially if you know the AA is kept in good condition and is doubled up on like if it was doubled up on sooner I think under the sea maybe could have pushed even further on this bottom side and I don't know if you'd go for these flags because so close to the enemy spawn but you could he could have certainly controlled this flag and this flag for the entire game pretty much I still looking for that shot oh it missed this is one thing that you do have one thing that I find whenever I use IS2s the accuracy stings me it really does P47 looking for the SU85. It's a clean kill. It's a clean kill. Oh, here come the P38s. Oh, nice bombing strike there. P38 did go down though. This P47 might also go down if the 37s continue firing at it. Will they get it? They did unfortunately change target briefly to this Thunderbolt. And that this one's going to get out alive. Yeah, the P37 went down. It got a good bombing strike. But we're now back to 12 to 12. So, can Under the Sea survive long enough to get an advantage and hold on? He's got the Gravardi here. He's found the 13 to 11. P47 managing to strafe that sniper on the top side. This 137 here, if it gets overwhelmed by bombers, which I'm surprised it hasn't already, um, that would be really bad because it would open up the entire top area of this map for Nilla's P-47 to just run riot. Uh, but here we have the Hellcat. It's actually getting the better of these Gavardia at the moment. That would be an easy couple surrenders. P-2 looking for the bombing strike. Oh, here comes P-47. Oh, IS-2. No. Just a little bit too far up. Oh, no. Just like overcommitted just a bit too much there does take down the p47 rocket plane finally but with the is2 gone he completely relinquishes any pressure he had on this bottom side and now the m10s are quite happy to just drive forwards there's nothing here that's going to stop them the 45 might be able to kill an m10 if it gets too close but the m10 is going to see it coming if it tries to move up that's really really bad for under the sea that might be the final nail in the coffin at this point 
there's still rifles like coming in. Basics here. So Nilla not quite out of infantry yet. Both players are definitely going to be pretty low. Uh, let's see if the 60 mm mortar can get a good smoke round in front of that Cavalier. Like it was just off. Another IS-2 1944 coming in. You see both players being very cautious with their points. 80 points per minute. Saves up for a 220 point tank. He's going to have to get a move on. On this top side actually, the T-3476 is completely uncontested. There is no th nothing here that can kill a T-34. The range of marauders can up on the hill, but in the town he can quite simply drive onto that flag and be happy, other than the fact that the aircraft might come in and uh, cause issues. Uh, another thing we've got to kind of look into is the supply here. Um, the supply on this 37 is pretty low, and if he doesn't have a supply truck to keep that supplied, it might not even matter if uh, Nilla kills it or not. Oh wow, the uh, M10 actually managed to get a line of sight onto the T-34 pushing into the town. The Ranger Marauder kills the one on the top of the hill. And I think that is going to be all she wrote for Under the Sea because it's looking kind of dire. <laughs> there is a serious lack of anything on the side of Under the Sea now with both of those medium tanks going down. Even the supply has gone down now for the 37, so it's not like he could even move that up to this 37 on the top side now. The M10s are completely just overwhelming the positions of Under the Sea. Now they do have a limited amount of 50 cal ammunition. So they're not really going to be able to provide like infinite pressure. Uh, but I mean, all, at this point, Nilla just needs to hold on for one minute and he becomes a champion of the Season 6 of the Steel Division 2 League. I'll make that 30 seconds as he picks up another flag. Rhino coming in on the bottom side with two more rifles late. Yep. The airplay really sealed the deal in this one. Those P-47s coming out strong and just not effectively dealt with earlier in the game. A second 37 on this bottom side early on I think would have made a ton of difference and if we'd seen P-47s flying uh, falling out of the sky earlier then this could have been a very different game. Like Two of those 37s on the bottom, two of the 37s on the top would be like pretty much perfect AA cover for the rest of your units. And yeah that felt relatively one-sided. I don't know. I felt like Under the Sea had moments where he could get back into the game. But just by me saying it like that, like, just shows that he was almost always behind. And it was just moments where, say, an, the IS-2 came in and he got pressure on the bottom side, he can bring himself back to even. The off-map on the top side, the rocket strike... The barrage, it it managed to do quite a lot of damage to Nilla, but ultimately he was just taking back the flag that he lost earlier. So it was again a, a situation where Nilla was always ahead in his plays. He was always the one to have the initiative. And in the end, I think the the kills from the aircraft really made a huge difference. And you can see the kills being 4,325. The 3,500 losses in a Maverick late game, having like an 800 kill difference is huge. Like that's like 10 minutes worth of income difference on the map. <laughs> that's a lot. So yeah, Nana managed to build up that lead and uh, win out this game. And yeah, congratulations to Nilla. I don't think I've ever seen him play as good as he played in this final. Like, that's not to say that he, I, I don't think he's played well in the past. I really do. Obviously, he's done very, very well. He he played amazingly against Vesley, but this was just, like, on another level. Like, especially in the first and second game, Nilla did incredibly well. Like, his aggression was unparalleled, and Under the Sea was really having a lot of problems dealing with that. It seemed like he was picking Maverick because it's meta, and then not being able to keep up with the sort of fast pace in phase 
uh, B. And the, again, this 47, P47 strafing the ZIS 2s killed the IL 2. Uh, Maxim M2A1 there. Uh, we go down. P38 didn't get that many kills, but this one, look. P34. P34, T34, SU85. This one killed two IS2 1944s. These these P47s, I kind of said that they're not going to be like crazy good in this game. But they were. They were really, really good. And um, Under the Sea just didn't deal with it properly. I feel like he had every opportunity to bring in a second 37 mil and he just didn't. Um, which is a shame. But... I do really, really like the way Under the Sea plays. When it, I think he's very good when he gets ahead early. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't manage to see that in this best of five series. Because, of course, with Nilla taking this third game, uh, he does declare himself winner. And therefore, we don't get a fourth and fifth game, which is a shame. I always like to cast more of these games. But yeah, <laughs> hats off to Nilla. Really, really just put the nail in the coffin the final nail in the coffin in this game. <laughs> Under the Sea tried to hold on as long as he could, but it wasn't enough to curb the aggression of Nilla. Wow. What an outcome. What an outcome. So yeah, I think that's Nilla's first ever win as uh, in the finals. Like He's managed to become the champion of Season 6, which is great. Really happy for him. It's good to see uh, somebody else than uh, Gonzo or Karma, I guess. <laughs> but under the sea as well. I mean, in the final, he was so close. In his name, he does have, like, plus injured arm. I wonder if that actually, like, really affected the way that he played. Um, if it did, then that's unfortunate. But alas, the games must go on. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for the still division league season six so i'm not sure when the season seven still division league starts but of course i will be covering the playoffs when that comes around which will be in another few months or so uh, so look out for that in the meantime i might cover some competitive content i'm not entirely 100 percent sure i know you guys uh, do really enjoy it and so do i i enjoy casting uh, these games but Sometimes it's hard for me to keep up with the amount of tournaments that are run by the Steel Division 2 community. Um, speaking of which, big, big thanks, of course, to the Steel Division League and uh, everyone behind that for organizing the Steel Division League and creating such a great competitive league for Steel Division 2. It's it's incredible what, what's come from uh, Protoss's initial efforts to get the Steel Division League running and now the people who carry it on are just doing such a great job of organizing it all and pl plus all the other tournaments that come about from it um so yeah um there you go that's it congratulations dilla commiserations under the sea well played throughout the tournament though and uh yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this playoff run um and this video thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video goodbye